This video is all about experimenting. I packed a few different microphones, including a contact mic, a hydrophone, and my main setup. I had a rough idea of what I wanted to record, but as always, things didn't go as planned. So I've headed up to Tall Rocks today. And if you're wondering why I'm taking my shoes off, it's because I just stepped in a river, trying to do a little river crossing to get here and now my feet are soaking wet. So I think first off, I'm gonna head over to a tree over there because it's the tree in the most recent TikTok reel that I've done. And I'm gonna put the Teles contact mic on it again. And I've also got this little Eco Pro. So it's this little prototype that Ezra has made from Oka Instruments, which clips onto your Teles contact mic, the magnetic one. And then you can add different prongs to it. So I'll see if that works, poking it into a tree because there's loads of trees with lots of gaps and holes. Let's take my socks off first, go barefoot, dry them out. Then we can start doing some recording. So here's the tree. It's got loads of little spots where the tree is like twisted and turned into each other, the branches, and they make some really cool creaky sounds. I've seen the spot which I recorded last time, which is just down there. But there's some other branches which cross over here, which I can record too, I think. Um, let's hear what it sounds like with just the wind blowing through it. This tree behind us is doing some wiggling as well. It's way windier than last time. Crikey. So I'm going to set up the Zoom F6 with the Telus contact microphone. I'm not going to use this probe thing just yet. I'm going to try it with this Ursa strap. So this is a waist strap, but my idea was I wrap this around the tree and then tuck this underneath. So then it doesn't damage the tree branch as much because I had some um, double sided tape and some blue tack last time and it did scuff up the bark a little bit and I don't really want to do that to a bunch of trees. Let's just try it with this Ursa strap first. <laughs> I just need to set up this zoom quickly. Make sure we've got phantom power on, wicked, and that's coming through. <laughs> okay, so this is a rather precarious little setup. I've got the Telus uh, magnetic contact mic here, and this is the Ursa strap just wrapped around the tree, and it snugly fits in there. And I've got the cable from the Telus coming this way, so it doesn't rub against the tree, uh, because you can hear the sound of this rubbing against the tree. And then it comes over here, attaches to this branch with a little bit of Velcro, and then back along down here, and then all the way to my Zoom S6, which I've strapped to the tree using the waist strap and then wedged it in between these branches. I probably could have done with a longer XLR cable so I don't have to attach this all to the tree, but it seems to work and it sounds pretty good. Let me just show you what it sounds like if something rubs against the cable. So this is why you've got to keep the cable from touching stuff. You should be able to hear me touching the cable there. So you have to be careful where you put the cable. And the other good thing about this um, Ursa strap is before, when the wind hit the microphone, because I had the gain set so high, you could actually hear the wind hitting the contact microphone with this Ursa strap. It kind of covers the whole mic. So you can't hear the wind hitting it anymore, which is actually a happy accident. <laughs> so if this does work quite well, uh, I might use an Ursa strap more often because it's really lightweight and it doesn't seem to be damaging the branch at all uh, because you're supposed to have it on your skin. So yeah, it should be all right for a tree. Anyway, let's do some recording. The great thing about doing these kinds of recordings as well with the contact microphones is you don't need to worry too much about making noise because it's just <laughs> touching the branch. It's only picking up sounds from there. If you had the gain really high, then you would need to be careful about making noise because you would pick it up from the contact microphone. But at the moment, it's just picking up the rattling of the trees. We cut it in now and you can hear the trees. 
Yeah. It's, I wasn't hearing it, but you guys would have heard it. <laughs> anyway, it's quite nice because you can just chill out, leave it to run for a bit, and then listen back to it. And it's kind of a little bit of a surprise as well, actually, a little bit like a drop rig. I think that's probably enough tree creaking. Yeah. I like that. Let's take it off. Nice. Looks the same as when I put it on. There you go. Pretty good. So that's a bit of a success, that. I'm quite happy with how the Ursa strap turned out. I'm gonna do some more of these wood creaks off camera with the Telus, but I'm not gonna do them on camera because I don't wanna have a whole video dedicated to wood creaks. This is a bit more of exploring this area. If you do want a video dedicated to wood creeks, let me know in the comments below and I'll do that. But instead, I'm gonna head over to that pond and pop this hydrophone in. So this is the Aquarian Audio H2D hydrophone because the pond is filled with frog spawn and hopefully some tadpoles now. And I'm really curious to see what that sounds like. So let's pack this up, head over to the pond and I'm gonna need to find a stick so I can hang this a bit further away in the pond. I should have brought a boom pole. <sighs> Shit. So here's the pond or the little pool of water. Uh, it's absolutely full to the brim with frog spawn. You can't even tell that there's frog spawn in it because there's no area where there isn't frog spawn. But I'm just trying to figure out how to get to a spot where I can get close to recording frog spawn. And I say frog spawn a lot. There is actually some up here on this hill, but it's dried out, bless them. But there's a little bit down here. So if I can try and not get my feet any wetter, I'll plop this hydrophone next to it and try and record some tadpoles and frog spawn. I've got to admit, I'm struggling a bit here because it's so windy. The wind's just blowing all these reeds and you can hear the reeds before you can hear any of the frog spawn or photosynthesis from the plants in this pond. I need to find a spot where the reeds aren't going to hit the cable on the hydrophone. So this isn't really working like I thought it would. Jerry rigged my tripod so I can have the hydrophone and just dangle it a bit further into the pond away from the reeds. But you can't really hear much. <laughs> um, I'll demonstrate now what it sounds like with the hydrophone in the Oh man, I'm just stepping in this bog. My feet are just getting wetter and wetter. I need to find a better spot. Right, I think that's a decent enough spot. And let's lower this in. Let's hit record. So that's recording. Yeah, you can't really hear anything. It just sounds like me dipping a hydrophone in the water, which is what it is. I don't want to try and go in the middle of the frog spawns. I, I really don't want to hurt them or damage them. There's a, I've got a pond at home, which I might try with that instead. Can't hear anything really. Maybe if I jack up the gain on the in post, but this is the spot next to the reeds which i was doing a minute ago but you can hear the reeds in the wind Yeah, worth an experiment, but maybe when there's more tadpoles out and it's not just frog spawn and there's other frogs and newts and that in the pond, it might be more fun. We'll save that for spring. Oh well, worth a test. I bought a pack of these rad cable straps a while back and I got some in the package which was for the uh, mini alto as well so it comes with some cable straps i got these black ones online i bought these ones 
and they're really handy. I didn't think I'd use them that much. But they're really good for cables and bodging together little rigs. And the great thing about them is even when they're wet, they work. I found with the, I don't know if I've got it in here, uh, a Velcro one, when it gets wet or muddy, it doesn't really work that well. But because these are just this little stretchy rubber with this little dongly bit, <laughs> tend to keep a little bag full of these cable straps nowadays because they always come in handy. I actually might try using one or two of these to attach the Telus microphone onto something. Oh, ideas, ideas, ideas. So it was a little bit of a fail over there in that pond area with the hydrophone, but there is this little stream running here, sort of snakes around from the main river up there. And this will be great with the hydrophone because we get some running water splashing over the mic. And I'm going to pair it with the Rycote mid-side rig, which I've also got in my bag. So here's the Mini Alto, and it's got the Rycote mid-side rig in it. And we can just chop and change between the two uh, microphones so you can hear what the difference is between the two microphones. Yeah, let's set up just here, I reckon. Cool. So here's the hydrophone, and I'll just pop that one in there. And then I've also got the Mini Alto with the Rycote mics. I don't know if you could see that on the camera then, there was a little flying bug thing that flew on top of the fluffy. <laughs> it's quite cute. Yeah, I'm a bit all over the shop today, but I thought it'd be quite cool <laughs> to test out the um, Ogre Instruments Eco Probe attachment on this boggy bit. Let's listen to that. Nice and squishy. And I thought that this little probe bit would be quite good to smush into the boggy ground and then do some squelches and mix it with the sounds from the MS rig. So I'm going to stab this into a spot around here, probably around there, and do some little squelches. So I think that's a quite a good first test with the Eco Probe. I've got it wedged into this mossy sort of boggy ground and it's sounding really cool. The only thing is I've turned up the gain so much that you can hear the wind hitting the side of the Eco Probe, so like going underneath and hitting the Telus mic on the actual contact mic bit. But it does sound really cool, especially with like the squelchy creaky sounds. It's a little bit like a weird monster kind of sound but I'll do some squishes again so you can hear it. I like
like it blended with the microphone as well so then you get a bit more clarity from the uh, Riker MS rig. Yeah, I really like this little probe attachment. It's quite cool. It keeps the actual microphone from being in a wet, dirty environment. So then you can just wash off the probe attachment. Definitely good little test. With that test done, I headed back over to the trees to record them with the eco probe. This is a very cool little spot. So I've got the eco probe wedged in between some of these branches which twist around. So on this tree, it's just, it's crazy. It's got all these branches that have just grown and twisted around each other. And you can hear the tiny little twigs rattling around, the leaves wiggling around in the wind. And then when there's a big gust, you can hear the creak where the wood from the branches is like creaking and rubbing against each other. Yeah, it sounds really cool. So I'm gonna hit record on here. So if I hit record now and then do a little couple of taps on the contact mic so we can get it synced up. There was a slightly larger tree next to the one I was recording. So after I was finished, I popped over to that one as well. So if I hit record on this one, I've got the Ursa uh, strap tied around instead this time because it's stopping the wind hitting the contact mic so much. Um, but yeah, if I hit record now, we'll just let this one play out. Sounds really cool. Good news, my socks are finally dry after like four hours. So I can pop them back on. And I think I'll probably wrap up the video there. It was a pretty fun day. Good day out, testing out the um, new Eco Probe and also playing around with the hydrophone. I haven't had that one out in a while. Uh, so it was a good little experimental day more than oh, this is exactly what I'm going to do today, <laughs> which is quite fun. It can be a good, good laugh sometimes having a little experimental day. If you don't already follow my Instagram or TikTok account, it's worth having a little gander on there because I upload different videos to my YouTube, uh, some more ASMR style videos. So head on over to my Instagram or TikTok. I'll put the link, well, the, <laughs> the uh, name of my account on the screen now. I'll pop it in the description box below as well. I've been meaning to say I've got some sound packs, some mini sound packs for sale on my Gumroad account and on Bandcamp. I'm mainly using Gumroad now, so I'll have that in my description as well. If you want to purchase some of my sounds, I really appreciate it. It helps support the channel and lets me go off and do weird recording trips. <laughs> oh, sounds like the tree's about to fall on my head. I don't think there's anything else left to say other than oh, I feel so good to wear these shoes <laughs> with a pair of socks again. <laughs> I had the soles out as well earlier and it felt horrible, but oh yeah, it's nice. Yeah, I'll wrap this video up there. And as always, peace out, big loves everyone. I'll catch you in a bit. Cheers. <laughs>